What's up guys and welcome to Wander. This releases this week on the PlayStation 4 as well as on PC via Steam. Its name exactly implies what it's about. It is an MMO based on wandering around and appreciating and exploring an environment, but sometimes it doesn't deliver on that aspect. So why don't we head on to the game and I'll show you what it is all about. So here we are in the game. Wander is about wandering. We can go into this pretty gigantic environment and start looking around and experiencing everything there is to experience. And it's sort of awkward because when I heard about Wander, I thought to myself, a beautiful environment, you know, that has things to do in objective because just because something doesn't have a focus of violence or, you know, combat, which is, it lists this game as a non-combat MMO. So I thought, well, that means this game has more of an opportunity to focus not on combat, but instead on different things to make this world more fresh and unique and interesting without the reliability of combat, but not quite. Think of this game like Guild Wars 2 or The Witcher. Just every enemy in the game, every weapon, removed. Gone. And that's that's what this game is. And it's it lacks so much. And it's disappointing because it's, it's not what I wanted to see at all. Now, one of the things you can do in Wonder is you can go to these tombstones like this and you can give it a listen. So why don't we? We've just finished this structure today. One of those little hearers scoffed at me and told me they could build the same thing in a fraction of the time. Perhaps she was right, but why does one need to be in such a hurry? And there we go, that's it. It gave us a little bit of information about this tower. We don't know what a Hira is or why that we built this tower and there's no glossary or anything like that for its thick vocabulary that's actually original. Like, that's the thing, there is a lot of original terms in this game that never upright explain themselves. So you're sitting here scratching your head like, um, what am I talking about here? What am I even listening to? Um, there is a, you know, an interesting lore and history and even a language in this game that you can learn, which we'll learn a piece of it right now. You can see these tombs have some type of symboling. Now this one has a K on it, but I don't think it means K as in the English letter, but let's give it a look. So this means small. So what we can do is we can right click and we can draw out K and then we should be able to but for some reason it didn't work. Okay, so there isn't really a specific way to communicate with players in this MMO, which is why it barely is an MMO. Think of it like this. You cannot text chat and you cannot voice chat with other players. The only way you can communicate with other players is by these drawing symbols. So I can draw a circle like this, or as I should be able to, and it should say hello, but for some reason it doesn't work anymore. It was working earlier, but now it won't. So this is supposed to mean hello, is that. But let's try this one. This means small, so yeah, let's, uh, oh, okay, here we go. Erica. Oh, well now it's, okay, that was weird. It just said all four of the commands I did at once. It sort of lightened it out. It seems like they're having major engine problems. Uh, I forget what, I think they're using the cry engine? And it's just, it's really weird, some of the issues this game is having. Um, <coughs> yeah, okay, that one's not working. But Erica, which is a circle, Erica. that means hello and goodbye. You know, there's some other stuff as well, like this. <laughs> oh, oh, not quite, okay. <laughs> and this is supposed to mean no. Oh. Yep, okay, there we go. And then this is supposed to mean waterfall. Yelachnuk. <laughs> But the thing is, is that there's no encyclopedia. Once you learn these words, it's 100% up to you to remember them. If not, you'll have to make the long walk back to wherever who knows that was to relearn it and to rememorize it. So communication isn't easy in this game. You'd have to spend dozens and dozens of hours looking and searching to even get an actual conversation going with somebody who has also done the same thing, spending hours and hours of communicating. And beyond that, the game definitely is buggy, as you saw earlier with all the communicating, but this game is about environment. You're supposed to be able to stop and look and enjoy what you're looking at. That's one of the most important things about this game. And environmentally, the graphical design isn't that bad. It's pretty beautiful, but you've probably already pieced together that graphically it isn't the best. Let me just walk in a straight line and see how many instances of texture popping we can count. And just walking in a straight line, you can see I've been standing here looking at this for a good while, so the game might know that I'm heading in this direction. Let's see how many times it texture pops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can just see things constantly, constantly popping up in front of me. And it's like, 
I understand that this is an indie game, and that's fine, but I feel like for the goal that they made this game to be, it, it doesn't live up to what its purpose is. Being an MMO and being an environmental exploration game, it doesn't live up to either of those things because it misses the basic components of them, a beautiful environment and players to actually communicate with. There's nothing you can really do with other players. You can look at them and awkwardly try to communicate with them with uh, scribbles, but if you don't oh. know the language, you might as well just nod at them and move on because it won't show their username, um, you can't add them on Steam because of that. It's incredibly weird, it's incredibly awkward, and it's just like, I'm not trying to bash on this game because I really, really wanted it to be good. And in some instances, it can be pretty. There are moments where it looks really good and I'm like, oh no, oh, wow, that's nice. But after two or three hours, I'm not really interested in playing it anymore. Because there's a thing, you can't just have a game that's about the environment, make the environment, and just say, well, we did it, we made the game, good job, high five. It's, it's, I don't know, it's not like that. Just because it lacks combat does not mean it lacks the materials of being a game with objectives and purpose. You know, th there's not even a single, I haven't found a non-playable character in the game. I would have loved to see animals and creatures exploring this land, interacting with each other, getting fruit from trees, fighting each other, becoming prey and predator. It's like you can do those things without it being a combat MMO, and that would exactly what, what it would be. We'd be able to observe the environment. What if, you know, an environmental game, you know, like why don't we have like bird, like, you know, bird watching, or have an encyclopedia of animals that where we can find. You can go underwater, but it's much of the same. There's no underwater life. You can find buildings, but as we saw at the beginning of the video, they're often barren, and there's nothing to see within them. If you're not interested in the lore of the game or learning the language, there's literally not too much here for you, and you unless you really, really love looking at this. Which is fine, until you start moving, which is the point of a video game, and everything pops up. Once again, I really wanted to play this game, and I really wanted to enjoy it, but the more I play it, the more I sort of just get dissatisfied, because it's not at all what it could have been. The concept is brilliant. Games don't need combat to be interesting or intriguing or to have depth to them. This could have been a real huge MMO with environments and animals and creatures and things to see and lore to learn and depth. So much depth, and it's like, why isn't it here? This is not an early access title. It's out on PS4 right now, and from my knowledge, PS4 doesn't even accept early access titles. Unfortunately, I haven't played the PS4 version, so I can't tell you if it has these texture popping issues. But it's like, even if this game did not have a single bug, if this game did not have a single bug, when it came to its coding, it was flawless. As a game, it falters. There is not enough here to suffice. And that disappoints me. I want to make my way up to this building. It's been hard to make my way to buildings because it's hard to find the proper way to them. There are main beaten paths, but there's nothing ordering you to go that way. And we'll pull up the map after we see if we can't make our way into this building over here. Because it would be cool to see it. <laughs> I really, really want to. And it, because of that lack of guidance, okay, so that's another thing, is the game lacks guidance, which is frustrating. It's really frustrating, because I'll see the trailer, and I, in the trailer you can even see your character riding a falcon, and it's like, wow, that sounds really stinking awesome, but it never tells you how to do that. And I understand that exploration is something that is, you know, an asset. I would be really cool to explore it and find it on your own. But if I drop you off in a sandbox and don't say anything, and just leave you there, you're probably going to get confused and leave. But if I drop you in a sandbox and say, how about you build a sandcastle? You would probably build a sandcastle and then be like, okay, this is how I use the sand. And then make whatever you want to your heart's content. And then that would work out way better. So we finally found one of these buildings. There doesn't seem to be something, at least on this bottom floor, made out of wood, like the architecture itself. Really cool looking. I have to, you know, I have to admit, but without anything inside of it, it's all just... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I guess you guys should probably understand what I'm talking about at this point. And it doesn't seem like there's much of anything up here either. It, it feels like we're playing a tech demo. Like, the concept and the ideas are there, and they're excellent. But the execution was done all wrong. All right then, so there really isn't anything here. So finally, I will show you guys the last feature, which is the map. And the map is interesting because it'll, it'll at times say, hey, uh, you can go and change 
you know, you, you can change your form. You don't have to be just a person. In fact, you start off as a tree man, and then you can turn into other forms, apparently. As you can see, there's two other empty pedestals after two and a half, you know, hours of exploring. I have not found them at all, but let's see if we can turn into the tree here, which is much of the same, actually. I didn't enjoy playing as a tree, because playing as a tree is exactly the same, except you're slower. And you can, you can jump, but the jumping doesn't get you much anywhere. It's really cool because the texturing on the tree guy is really, really awesome. But besides that, there just isn't anything. You can stand here, pretend to be a tree, and, and move on. It, it, it's interesting because it's like, where did it all go? I'm not sure, but either way, I really hope that this game keeps getting patched and gets added on. I really hope they do revert this into an early access version because that would be awesome, and they can add the things I'm expecting as I head down this waterfall. And it's like, this is really interesting. There's a whole bunch of dam system here, and like, what is going on here? I'm stuck. I, I am stuck in the waterfall. <laughs> I'm getting out, I think. Ooh. Oh, trees can't swim. That's the issue. Ooh, ooh. Oh, you know what? I can't walk in the waterfall. So to get out of here, I need to hop my way out. Oh, no, there I go. <laughs> All right, then. So I guess you guys are probably understanding a good bit about Wander at this point. It looks like we're actually hitting some um, more buildings, which they look all exactly the same to the building we saw earlier. So I'm probably going to cut back when we actually get closer to them because it seems like it might be a bit of a long walk. So we're finding some pretty cool stuff in the background here, but the walk... The walk might not be worth it. It's like, that's the thing, I want to go experience whatever the heck that is. But every single piece of building and architecture I've found in this game has been empty and boring and bland, so why would I ever put the effort to going all that way on this slow tree? I can go back to the map here and I can place a map marker, but once again, where's the motivation for it? Because I can set a map, like, it doesn't, it never really explained the map. It just said, press N to use the map marker. And I'm like, okay, I'm here now. What is this? So I can try this really quick. Let me just left click and nothing happens. Right clicking, I can draw. <laughs> Not what I'm looking for. And so I assume that the button I need to press to, you know, put the map marker down is M. And what does that do? Puts me exactly where I was. And it's like, I could go to the options and see maybe the controls will be listed, but they're not. So it's all a shot in the dark. Um, let's check out the settings here while we're here though. You have your inverted mouse and this invert in general, and then you also have the mouse speed. Not bad, of course, it would be awesome if you could change the controls, that way you could actually see what the controls are. Graphic settings aren't really that, you know, very good at odds. It's very high. I have the graphics on the highest setting and I still get those texture poppings. Of course, the game runs smoothly, so it's well optimized, but it doesn't matter though because the game still doesn't look as good as it could. And then of course resolution, which it says 800 by 600, but I'm at 1920 by 1080. And then apply changes that I didn't do. Oh, oh, now it changed resolution, okay. All right then, sorry about that. And finally we have the sound settings, which we can change the audio volume. And it's like, that's plenty fine, but why no subtitles? It's not like we need them or anything. And of course, we finally have the can't move button. Just in case we're stuck, it resets us at the beginning and you have to travel everything you traveled again. But there's no subtitles either, which is annoying because some of the you know best parts of this game are the audio parts of it, where you get to learn about the environment and do the language. And the language is a cool idea. But if it's the only way to you know talk to the other players, then it's awkward and nearly impossible, but when it uh, stand alone, it's bad, but if this was added and like this had objectives and maybe like only certain like NPCs could talk this language, then it would be awesome. It would be like, oh man, now I have an opportunity. It's just like, I feel like this game had a great concept that had so many missed opportunities for it to be a really in-depth game that was incredibly different from the rest, but instead the opportunities were missed. So I'd say hold on to your money for this game until they change it dramatically, which I don't know if they'll ever do, but let's hope they do, because they have a good idea on their hands. They seem to have some talent on their hands, too. It's like, graphically, it's like the graphic design of it is great, it's pretty good. It's just, it's lacking in so many different departments, and it depresses me so. So, with that being said, this is Wander. Hopefully this game gets improved within the next few, you know, months at the least. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. You can find a link to it in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.